We're live. We're live. We're live. Hi, everybody. It's Thursday. Hello, Thursday hello. night. Joe's in the house. Hi, ladies. This is going to be Thursday night tilting. We're going to be a live video craft for adults uh, because we use needles and sharp things. And we will be uh, also a chat room that will be interacting with the chat as we play along tonight. They will play with me, and we will have we'll have just some goofy, goofy fun. Yeah, we'll be goofy. Like we like to be goofy. So if you're watching this at a later time, and you would like to um, zip through the boring parts to get to the fun parts, I do invite you to do so. In the meantime, I will be interacting with the chat room as they come in, and Joe will be my sidekick today. It's the Beth and Joe Funny Show. Woohoo! <laughs> Hi, Joe. Hello. Hello. <laughs> We got online lickety split. I thought I was going to be just a minute late, but I'm not. I'm right on time. Look right them, on time. Look what trick or treaters left you. All I on. know. Look, I got some trick or treat candy. I can't imagine that. Hmm. I just can't imagine it's still there. Mm. Uh huh. I've been mm. gone all morning. And you've been gone all day. <laughs> it's nighttime now. <laughs> So anyway, um, Teresa suggested, our very own Teresa Church, she suggested that we do uh, this little pumpkin that she found. And I said, oh, yes, 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 we'll do it. <laughs> so I'm going to attempt to do this. And um, this is what I've started uh, just a few minutes ago. And so I think I've got some of the humps okay. I'm making mine a little bit bigger, but that's okay. That's nothing wrong with that. And uh, now I just have to center, get this centered, and and get this side over here up more towards us. And I think I can do it. I think I can get her. I can get get to look like that. I just I just have to I, I have to just look at it real closely as I do it. So this is the felting part of my show. If anybody uh, in, wants to try shell, uh, felting, it's for adults, mature adults, because we do use a very, very sharp needle. And uh, the needle has to be, uh, it's sharp and it hurts. So, you know, we don't want anything bad to happen to our needles. We don't want them. Uh, we don't want them on the floor. We don't want them broken and flipped on the floor because that would be a potential hazard if you were to step on it. That would really, really hurt. They're very, very sharp. But it is a little, it's a craft and it's an easy craft. Uh, but you have to be mature enough to understand how to be responsible with the needle part. And you can buy these little um, beginner kits and they have everything in the kit that you need. They've got these little finger guards that you could put on. Uh, called finger cots and these finger cots sort of when you have your fingers here they they protect your fingers so when you do a stab with your needle you don't accidentally hurt yourself and I've already stuck myself once today but I can't tell where it is now when I drink a little bit of water after a while I'll see the spray and I'll know where where I stuck myself at but <clears throat> that's just a joke but anyway, it does hurt when you when you stick yourself. So you have to be careful. But you get to make so many cute things with your felting. So uh, I highly recommend you go and video. Uh, uh, what do I want to say? You go and uh, look up some videos on YouTube of felting. And you will get tons and tons of uh, ideas and people that do this little hobby. It's an it's a it's an old craft. It's an ancient craft, and uh, and I think it's trying to make a little comeback because I've been doing it for a couple a couple years, and uh, and so has some of the girls that come in here. They've been doing it too. So I don't know where everybody's at tonight, Joe. Do you? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, there must uh, be some uh, place. Uh, Free pizza or something. I think there must be something going on somewhere. Usually I have people in the room by now, four minutes. Uh, if I don't get anybody in the room, uh, maybe I need to go out and come back in or something. But uh, let me try getting on in YouTube. And see YouTube. Yep. No, I'm in and here. See YouTube. 
I can get on. So, and I can chat from over here. So, I guess everybody's running late tonight, and that's okay. Run As long as they're running, uh, there's no harm in running late. <laughs> and that's a good thing about video and, and uh, doing lives. It's, uh, you can watch it later. You know, you can watch this later if you don't catch it uh, on the live. So, uh, but anyway, I'm going to get my picture back up right here. And that's what I'm going to try to and attempt. Those two little things hanging They're pixie or fairies. Fairies. Uh huh. Oh. A little tiny fairies, and I'm going to put them up here, and I'm going to make my fairies a little bit bigger. Yeah. I'm going to make my fairies a little bit bigger. These are fall fairies, and they're enjoying the fall pumpkin. So, okay, I'm just going to continue to work until. People do get in here. So anyway, when you look at the picture, you see some dark values lower down in the pumpkin. Um, so I'm going to try to uh, imitate those dark values. And they're kind of like on this side of the ridge. And we did discover the other day that <laughs> pumpkins, these, um, you know, they have these little humps and these center, these center, uh, areas are called ridges and we looked it up so we know we're political correct on that so i'm going to go down into the ridges of some of these and uh, get some deep value colors in there so joe how are you today honey what have you been doing hi vanessa there she is Hi, Vanessa. Vanessa's number one. We've been waiting on right. waiting on everybody. We were kind of worried, thinking that I wasn't, uh, I didn't push the right button or something. Yeah. But I guess I did. So, Joe, tell us a little bit about your day today. Did you, did you have receive any blessings? Oh yeah, I've, I've received all kinds of blessings. And yeah. I just. Got up. Hi, Rebecca. I got up. Got up. Went by. I got something in the kitchen and went back to sleep. <laughs> this morning. Yep. I slept all day. Yeah. I did not know. I don't know what time I went to sleep last night. I'm pretty sure uh, it was late, but I, I I slept good when I did go to sleep, and uh, I just played the game of solitaire till I fell asleep. Yeah. Well, you was playing solitaire at two o'clock. Well, okay, so it must have been soon after that, because I don't remember staying up very late. No, you didn't stay up too much later than that. And um, we do. We stay up late, and we watch TV and oh, stuff. We watch, and we watch, the, uh, uh, we, what, we watch anything new last no, night. we watch a new, a new uh, oh, we, tra tractor pull. Oh, oh, okay. These were, um, where they weren't pulls, they were uh heat tractor heats they were racing okay these and they were lawnmowers they were they looked like a big riding lawnmower but some of them had bigger wheels than a regular lawnmower so we called them kind of little tiny crack uh tractors but anyway they were up in the mountains and they had this um a uh, soupy <laughs> ditch, this real deep ditch that they dug down in and they filled it full of water and it obviously had clay uh, in the ground, a lot of clay because clay, if you if you know anything about ponds or any retaining waters, if there is a, a, a natural clay in that in that pool of water, the clay will prevent the water from draining out of the hole. And there you get a pond. Well, this obviously had a lot of white clay. And I know a little bit about clay because I like to do pottery. And so I'm, I've am i learned about clay and things. And I would love to get back into my pottery someday. That would be that would be a, a another goal. I, you know, it was a goal when I got to do the pottery. When I when I really got to do the pottery up north, and I it was it was a long, lifetime goal that I did not ever think that I would ever ever achieve. Uh, I just thought it was unreachable to be able to do pottery on my own and to have my own oven and to actually make pots and 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 create and play. But then when we moved down here, I did get a, a pottery room set up in the garage, but it's been packed up the garage has been stacked 
at uh, Nora at the front door. It's been stacked up so much with so many things in the garage. It's just impassable to get back into my pottery area. So I would love to get into that. And I'm telling you that story so that Joe would feel guilty over here and try to maybe help me get the garage cleaned out someday so we could get out there because I want to put a camera out there and everything. But anyway, this pot, this uh, pool of water was 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 probably at least two or three feet deep of, of standing water. And these little tractors took their, they had it all roped off and they took one at a time and they, they ran through the ditch and the water to see if they could get through to the other side. And the majority of the tractor, tra uh, lawnmower tractors did not make it through. And because they would get down to the, the bottom of that hole and they would spin because clay is real, real slick when it's wet. So they couldn't get through. And they were, tra these were little lawnmower tractor heat. And they were timing them. And it was like a uh, an event that you would see at the fair or something. And um, and it was so funny. It was on YouTube. And uh, then they had then they had the, the finalists. And then they did uh, then they did how fast you could go through. They did first they wanted to make sure you got through. And this one guy, he got through not only got through, he turned around and he came back through it again the other way. And it was really it was kind of funny and it was fun and it was it's a family thing. There were kids uh, all ages there and everything. So we watched the tractor pulls. Then we uh, got on another uh, website of a, of a guy that we watch all the time from New York. And he uh, he's a young guy. He's a young guy right out of high school, started a business contracting business on his own. His dad helped him get started and he took off with this business and he has his own business of construction and contracting. Uh, but he, you know, he not only works hard, he plays hard and he lives up in the mountains of New York. And these mountains are really, really big and they're beautiful. And we, we watch them year round and we see the, spot, the, the seasons of the trees. And right now it's fall and they do these four wheeler uh, runs and they have a group up there of uh, young adults. And this group is so massive. It's it's. It must be statewide or regional wide because when they meet, there's hundreds of them that meet together and it's a big organization. And I don't know what the name of the organization is, although I'm sure we could probably Google it and find it. But these guys four wheeler all over these mountains and they have these uh, they're not mini bike trails. They're not four wheeler trails. They're more like these are more like uh, uh, they're. They're four wheels, but they're bigger than a four wheeler. They're more like a, a little Jeep. And I'm sure there's a nickname form uh, for these vehicles. They're off road, off road vehicles. Becky would or Rebecca would know, uh, but they're off road vehicles. Well, he got his vehicle and he said, I'm going to make it so that it's road legal. So he put turn signals on his. Uh, they all have uh, brake lights, but he put a, a uh, a license plate light he put turn signals in a horn he put windshield wipers on it uh and he made it road legal uh, yes atvs thank you vanessa all terrain vehicles well um uh, and he made his vehicle much better than the other guys because he was able to drive his on the road legally got licensed for it and everything so this is how top notch that this young young uh, entrepreneur is he he's a contractor and he loves to work on machines and and vehicles and dump trucks and forklifts and he's got the toys the man's he's got all of the man's toys and he built himself a, a house on the side of the mount of the in the mountains up there in new york he built himself a, a house out of sea boxes and he started out with a garage and then he built on the garage and he built an upstairs and that's where he lives. And he, he, uh, we, you get to see him build on it and improve on it over the years because we've been watching this guy for several years now. And, and, uh, and so we watched, we watched four wheeling and we watched the tractor pulls. <laughs> we were watching all kinds of videos yesterday. So <laughs> if you get bored, go to YouTube and, and type in something and look at other things to watch. You know, it doesn't have to always be my channel or Rebecca's channel or <laughs> it, it could be anything. You can watch anything and, uh, and enjoy yourselves. It doesn't have to be TV.
<laughs> so hi everybody that I, has come in it says there's four of you in the room and i have a hard time there's an awful lot of typing going on there for four people but welcome everybody there's vanessa rebecca and brenda and kimberly hi everybody welcome 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 and if i'm not mistaken <laughs> yeah the kitty can the kitty cams i love to watch kitty cams and and in the in the winter time around Christmas, they have the Christmas puppy cams and and the and the little baby kitten cams, and they're sitting in front of the TV or in front of the fireplace, in front of the tree, and they're batting at the little Christmas ornaments and rolling over each other and acting real cute. Yeah, I love to watch those. <laughs> the Yule log, <laughs> and it'll be coming around pretty soon too. So, and uh, while we're talking about Christmas, I have decided that I'm going to do a Christmas book. We're working on the fall book right now. we got a harvest book, and, and, uh, and I'm working on this today, but I, I'm kind of chatty right now. I don't know why. I think my Coca-Cola clicked in. We did this Thursday, and I told you I was going to come back and uh, highlight it, and I did highlight it, and I need my... my uh, marker back because I missed the spot right there um, and I highlighted the outline of these guys turned out really really cute I didn't think that it was going to I was going to get it as cute as it was in the picture but I'm very happy with it now that I've outlined it and everything and I was also going to put a buckle on this guy here and I happen to have a silver marker so I thought a buckle up here would be appropriate because they wore buckles on their hats, and they also wore them on their shoes. And so that was fun. So there's my my uh, pilgrims, and we're going to maybe we'll do something else again here in a, in a little bit. Well, I haven't uh, I haven't picked out a picture yet, but we can do either a fall page or maybe a fall painting after I work on this a little bit more. And uh, it's still early. We're still waiting on some people to come in, and uh, so yeah it's all good it's all good everything's good so how's everybody doing everybody doing okay oh rebecca put a post in my book about my felted witch yeah i heard about your felt i saw your felted witch rebecca um she has some kitty cats in her in her home and her kitty cats got a hold of her witch. Uh, was it Stormy? Was it Storm that got a hold of it? And um, and it, and all of a sudden, I thought this cat was Rebecca's cat, but all of a sudden, it turned into Shannon's cat. <laughs> so this is uh, Sharon Lombard. She made a little uh, elf. It looks like an elf or pixie pixie gnome, like a little gnome Christmas. And we're getting ready to do some Christmas things, too. Uh, here's Create with Becca. This is, uh, if you don't watch Rebecca, you should. Hi, Sherry. Um, Rebecca does some fun things today. I'm sorry I slept through today. I, I didn't get up to 4 o'clock. Literally slept. And I was sleeping so good and so peaceful. I woke up and everything was quiet. And I thought, is it too early to get up? Is it too early? <laughs> But no, it's not too early. You better get up and get ready. <laughs> get on here. <laughs> so I had to get up to get ready. But Rebecca does some fun things. And, and she's doing November prompts. And uh, the second day of November was flowers. And, and she made a little flower to put in a little journal book that she's made. And I'm thinking she's wanting me to see something else. Gigi is another person that streams. Uh, if you don't uh, subscribe to her, do. And if you may not catch her online because she is in a different part of the world and her time schedule is different than ours, you can always watch her on the replay. Hi, Sharon. <laughs> and And here is... Here's here's what uh, Rebecca wants me to see. And then she says, oh, my gosh, death by cat. <laughs> Storm, you're grounded. Storm is the kitty cat. She stole this from a shelf, like uh, the last picture. And 
and did it look like <laughs> it didn't look like that uh so let's see what she, she this was her witch i thought she got a hold of the purple one uh but but this is the witch that she had made and i'm looking for the other pictures here it is and this was what's left of it oh no oh no she tore it up the witch is gone oh rebecca <laughs> all that work and you got to do it again well i guess i guess you'll just have to do it again uh and and we can show you how uh how to repair a felted witch yeah <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. She's putting Gigi's channel in. And I know there's a lot of other girls in here that stream. So I'm all for it, guys. I'm all for other people streaming and sharing their art. Brittany, uh, Brittany comes in here a lot, and she streams. She's really cute to watch. And, uh, and uh, I was going to do something. I haven't done it yet. But Brittany's mom is going to have surgery. And I think it would be she, – she, she – she crafts with Brittany sometimes, and I think that's so sweet for a mother daughter to craft together. That is just, that is just top drawer in my in my book. And I think it would be kind of neat if we sent uh, uh, Brittany's mom some get well cards and some ha happy mail cards. And if you all want to get together and do that, just message me. Brittany is in my in my mailing address book. Her mother's name is Karen. You can send all her cards to. Brittany in care of Karen for Karen and um, and she'll be sure to get them to her and Karen has traded uh, ACT cards with me before she she uh, for a newbie for a newbie she does awesome awesome work and uh, and so does Brittany you know and Brittany I remember when Brittany first started streaming and she didn't know what she was doing and she didn't know if she was doing it right and she didn't know if if she was good enough and she is good enough she does excellent and she does she's got her own thing going on she's got her own style and it's perfect it's a great great video and uh, so she does stream so I, I would definitely uh, highly recommend Brittany blinger creations blinger her name is Brittany linger and if you put the b in front of the linger you get the blinger and i love that blinger creation name it is awesome so uh please please uh check them out and let's send karen a card i'd have a drink i'm talking too much so anyway i do have a little uh, card folder here and i'm gonna go ahead and get a card out <laughs> and uh, yeah you like britney's channel she is she is so she's 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 uh she's she's good i love her i love her so this one says for some bunny special oh that's an easter card okay well we'll say that one for easter <laughs> i might have to go over here's a get well soon here's another get well wish Let's see what this one says. Hope you're feeling better soon. This looks like a Freddy card. <laughs> this, this is the first one I picked up. Let's 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 look at this one. Get well soon. Wishing you bright days ahead. I'm gonna get this one out for for Karen. So uh, that'll be that'll be nice. And um, and if you know Brittany, please uh, let's let's show her some support. Let's show her some happiness. That's that's real happy mail. That's what I call real happy mail. And I'm just going to go ahead and write her a quick note. We heard you're going to have surgery. So we want to wish you a speed the recovery. And I'm gonna put the chat room. We'll put the chat room and a heart. And I'm gonna put Beth and Joe. Now, if you want, I'll write your name on here if anybody wants me to. 
I'll go ahead and write your name on here and include you in my get well card. This is to Karen. Me, Vanessa, okay. And Karen does like to do uh, ACT cards. So if you want to send her one, she would she would really get a kick out of it. Anybody else want me to put your name down here? You're welcome. Sharon, okay. I'm going to put uh, your last names just in case she doesn't uh, know all of y'all's last name. Because I know she's been in chat before. Okay. I'll write them wonky. Brenda, okay. And Brenda, I just want you to know, if I ever get you mixed up, there is another Brenda D in our group that floats around. I don't think it's you. you. I think it's another Brenda D, but you're Brenda D M MC. And, uh, and I have noted that mentally in my brain. So how, how long it stays in my brain, I'm not sure. <laughs> so if I ever get you confused with the other Brenda, forgive me. I try not to. Oh, you sent Karen an ACT last week? Good, Mina. That's wonderful, Mina. And I'll put your name on here. Okay. Okay. We'll do that. We did that. We got that. Ugh. Get me some napkins out. Okay. Anybody else want their name? Oh, hi, hi Angie. Since she's not at home, she's working. Okay, Angie, no problem. Hello, Angie. I hope you're doing well. When do you get to go home? Okay, I've got a few names on here from everybody. And if you don't uh, uh, don't know her, send Br uh, it's Brittany Linger's mama. So we're going to send her a card. And I'm just going to send it to Brittany's address. And we'll get that out to her tomorrow. So, in the meantime, I'm going to I'm going to continue to <laughs> work on my my felting project. And I need my phone back. So, uh, <laughs> I'm sure, Rebecca, when you get your witch back, I'm sure that she will be just as beautiful as she was before, okay? I hope so. I really do. So, um, thank you for sharing, <laughs> sharing that with us. Her kitty cat's in the doghouse. Uh-huh. So, let's go back to our little pumpkin project for a few more minutes. And does anybody have any felting questions? I am felting uh, on a piece of velour. Uh, do you know those those uh, real soft blankets? Sometimes you get them in scarves in, in this fabric. It's real soft on both sides, and it's it's not cotton and it's not wool, but it's soft. And you usually get them in blankets. And it's fuzzy on both sides, real felty on both sides. And I've seen, I've had, used to have a jacket like this in this fabric. And I don't know how they make it, but it is feltable. You can felt on it. Uh, and that's what I'm using today is a piece of velour fabric that I had in my, in my drawers over here. And I thought, well, you know, it works. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> yes, I'm using the pokey needle, so Angie's going to, she's going to close her eyes and move along. <laughs> Can't help that, honey. We do, we do all kinds of crafts here. Nothing personal, Angie. <laughs> it's nothing personal. We're going to make this, we're making this pretty little 
pumpkin right here with the two little fairies. And as soon as I get my pumpkin uh, organized, I will be making those fairies real quick. And you'll see that they'll come out fast. Uh, they'll come about fast. And um, I also have some other fibers here in my possession. This happens to be some yarn. And you can see the, uh, the ply on the yarn. And if it's wool, if it's a wool yarn, you can take it apart and you can use the wool in your art. And I love taking apart wool uh, because of the fibers. They're already coarse. They're, it's real coarse and rough and it gives texture to your projects. And sometimes I just like the extra texture. It's called extra texture. Woohoo! <laughs> and so uh, I don't mind using other fibers. And I love to look for fibers. It's like at the secondhand store and stuff. And, um, and if it's 80% wool, at least 80% wool, sometimes you find blends, you can felt with it. Uh, if it's less than 80%, you can try felting it or maybe mixing it with some more of your wool to give it more of a, uh, give it more uh, increase of wool product. And the wool is what felts. The wool uh, is the type of fur and the type of fibers that is feltable, that comes from uh, animals. And, and most animals, you can use their, their fur and their wool to uh, felt with. Um, sometimes, uh, like Angora is rabbit. You can felt with rabbit uh, fur, but it's very, very slick and it's on the silky side. So you might have to practice. And, and I've never felted with Angora, but I would think that you might need to mix it with a little bit of white uh, wool. To, to get it to felt but the top part would be so pretty and felty uh, soft and it would also be um, uh, fibrous in in the the ends would be fluffy you know in the angora uh, to me but anyway there's lots of things that you can use to felt with lots of different fibers that you can try to use and uh, but most of your acrylic which is man-made is not feltable they don't it just doesn't felt you could just poke and poke and poke and poke all day long and it just will not uh intertwine with each other it's slick but uh the way they make things these days man-made items you'd be surprised of some of the things that they are coming with um coming out with i was watching uh how it's made on youtube and i love to watch that show if you don't you should <laughs> how it's made and and watch and see what things are that they make and they are making material and fibers and yarn out of plastics i kid you not i i saw that and i could not believe what they were actually doing and how they were actually making it it's interesting how they can process and refine plastic materials to do that with uh, the the in the the man-made industrial systems that we have in all over the world it's a, it's just it's amazing what we can make out of nothing you know and it's wonderful that we can make uh, items out of of plastic and and reusable recycling stuff uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, but they, they, they break the plastic down and they wash it and they chemicalize it and they, they, uh, process it so fine that it's clean and it's clear and then they add color to it and then they make, uh, like little tiny pellets out of it and then they, they send it to the making department and they take the pellets and they melt it down and string it out like you would do, um, silk from a silk worm. And they, they make a thread out of the plastic. They make a thread. It's it's amazing. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Barbara. Welcome, Barbara. Hello, everybody coming in. There's 13 of y'all. Hello, hello, hello. 
Oh, Angie said she got to go home last night. Okay, glad you're home. Safe and sound. Um, so anyway, I'm working on this little pumpkin, and I've been chatty for some reason. And Joe took off. He was here just a minute ago. I don't know where he went. Uh, <laughs> so probably out to the barn. He likes to do things out there. Uh, so anyway, I'm trying to um, make a pumpkin here. Trying to make some pumpkins here, and I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to turn this pumpkin around. Oh, it's going to be hard, but I'm going to try to do it because these humps go this direction. Uh huh. I might just have to make it my own <laughs> and not do what they do, but do what I can do. <laughs> That's what I might have to do, but I can try. I can try. I'm using this darker uh, wool to uh, do the outlining with. So it's working. So now tell me something new with you guys. Mina says, my dog Chloe. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mina. Oh, she passed away in 2010. But she is the softest and she had the softest and fluffiest undercoated. I used to brush her outside. And in the spring, birds would carry her fur away for their nest. Oh, that's a sweet story to remember. That's the way to do it, Mina. She's still out there. Aw. Yeah, we love our fur babies. And and um, and I got, you know, we got Nora uh, to be a, a playmate with the with uh, Abby because Abby's I think she's 15 now I'm like Thanksgiving's going to be her birthday she was born in 08 she was born sometime early November of 08 so that makes her how old this year girls you all can be my calculator calculate that up for me So she's, I think she's going to be 15. It is. It's fascinating how birds can create their own nest. And I think, I, I do watch bird videos too. Uh, <laughs> and watch how they make their nest. And I love to watch the ones that, that shape the uh the little sack that hangs down are those swallows the type of bird and they they their bird nest hangs down like a big drop droplet of some sort up oh, bug alert that was nora she's got a bigger a bigger bark I don't know if I'm doing any good or not, but I'm trying. Clickbait. Watch my channel, Sore. <laughs> They're talking about something, clickbait. Clickbait is when they, they put something fascinating in the picture and you click on it just to get to see the whatever was fascinating and it and the channel has nothing in it that you like. It was anything to do with the picture. That's called clickbait. <laughs> it it happens to the best of us. So I'm felting away here. And I'm trying to, 
every time I look at this, look down at this, I, I'm thinking it's turkey feathers. Maybe it's going to be a turkey <laughs> instead of a uh, pumpkin. That would be different. It's not impossible. I'm going to go ahead and get this green thing going on in here so I won't forget. It's supposed to be a pumpkin. Get this stalk here. So we don't forget who we really are. And down here in these ridges, there's a little bit of green. A little bit of green. And I have to lift it up. You can see all the little pokes. This is this is the underneath a good view of the underneath part of a felting project. Perfect example of what it looks like on the bottom. And this is this is the felted part. These are all of the fibers that I've poked through the other side from this side to get it to stay because it's on there permanently. Now you can you can pick it off. You can pick some of it off, but the idea is for it to stay together for your project. So that is good. What we do for our crafting, what we do, it's amazing. Now up here in this direction, the green isn't as dark, but I'm going to put it up there. Real tiny light. I love to blend. It's one of my favorite things. And I'm still going to add some more orange and color to it. So this felt, uh, this velour is, um, it's so soft and it does get uh, lint, lint on it and stuff. So what I will do is uh, I'll use a uh, one of those cat roller brushes on it to get all of the extra fibers off of it that are just laying there. Because it's a navy, it's a navy blue. It's not black. It's real navy, but it looks black online, and it looks luscious, doesn't it? I think it looks really good, like a velvet. So you can try different, uh, different fibers and things. And also, I I've showed this before. <clears throat> But I have um, another piece that I did a couple years ago, and and this is how I did a tree, and I was just playing around. Uh, this turned out to be an old antique wool blanket from my grandparents. It was either my grandfather or my great uncle, which was the same same age line. Um, he had this in the in his trunk, uh, like the car blanket. And when I got the blanket, uh, I said, oh, I want the wool. <laughs> you know, this was years and years ago before I ever started felting and had no idea what I was going to do with the old blanket. But I knew that it was an old blanket and I knew that it was wool. And I knew that, you know, they 
they used to have to carry a wool blanket in their trunks of their cars because whenever their cars broke down back in the old days, you needed the wool blanket and you all never wanted to be stranded without one. So everybody had a wool blanket in the trunk. And, um, and so anyway, I cut the blanket up into little squares like this and I turned a few of them into sceneries with my wool uh, felting and, uh, and, I did not know what I'm going to do with it, except just to look at it and talk about it and <laughs> and maybe work some more on it. But here, you know, this was like two years ago, and I, I was experimenting with the orange and the yellow blending. I love that. I love how I did the clouds. And then I've got the tree, and I still have clouds behind the tree. And I decided to put apples on the tree. This is this to me is juvenile because it's like you used to do when you were a kid, first grade. You'd put apples on the tree, and then you'd put some down here on the ground. <laughs> and they're not realistic apples, but maybe sometime ne next time I make an apple tree, I will put some tree limbs in here. You know, some wood limbs, maybe make that into an apple and make it look like an an apple and put some shadowing on it and put a little dent in it where a stem would be you know maybe maybe i will advance you know with my skills of apple skilling and then with the with the trunk i would definitely blend that with some more different browns two or three different brown, browns and black and make it make the bark look barky you know and then maybe the roots would come out a little bit down here so there's a there's a lot of room for growth on this this particular piece uh and i might just do that you know and then this is a supposed to be a bush and i got a couple little flower buds on there so maybe i can actually put some leaves uh felt some leaves on here to make them look like actual leaves you know and maybe actual petals so there's lots of room to grow when you do your felting if you don't do it all at once at first it's okay you know <laughs> bye barbara she's got to go do her domestic diva duties we love you barbara <laughs> Yes, it, and then you get to keep the grandparents as felt, you know, and um, you could do that with any kind of clothes. Um, you know, when my my uh, my dad died, uh, my mom knew of some ladies and they knew she knew that they could take some of daddy's shirts and make teddy bears out of them. So she had some of his favorite shirts, especially the shirts that he had with pockets. And these ladies would take those shirts and put the pocket right in the middle of the chest of the bear and make a bear stuffed toy out of daddy's old shirts. And she made one for everybody. <laughs> and, you know, we're adults and we're not into teddy bears, but it was such a sweet idea to have a piece of fabric that was my dad's, you know. And, uh, you know, so it's just a little sentimental thing. <laughs> and you could do the same thing with your, with handkerchiefs. You know, you might be able to make something with those. You could felt on your handkerchiefs. Um, that would be interesting. And it would be more like a little bit, not just felting, but a little bit of embroidering with on your on your handkerchief. That would be cute. And uh, maybe maybe coming up with a great, idea you know uh, and your own creation you know so that would be cute and you could even take a handkerchief and and use it as a pillow top for the top of a box or a little jewelry box that you have and you can decorate that little box that dress it up and put the new little hanky put that little hanky on top do some felting and embroidery on it and have the lace coming around the box it would really be cute that would be cute you can do lots of things talking too much hi abby but uh you can you can felt on anything you know if there's a will there's a way and it might be that you felt something off to the side and and you've got the edges all trimmed around the felting project and then maybe you could glue that down onto something if it was something that was not feltable if it was a hard surface or maybe it was a leather or a plastic or something but you could still felt something 
you know, felt it flat, felt it pretty, felt the edges real tight, 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 and then trim around it with your scissors and glue it down on something. You could still do your felt thing. Oh, Cheryl is still fighting with her cold. Oh, boy. And you're trying to do a video? Great, Cheryl. Cheryl's been videoing off and on for a year or so. And she's been uh, trying to... Uh, she's got she's got a lot of followers. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to Cheryl, uh, you should subscribe to her. She does cute little, little videos and... Um, She's been wanting to do more, and you just have to get out there and do them, Cheryl. Just do it. <laughs> Mina says, after her dad died, her mom gave me his silk ties. Exactly, and you use them to make robes for tiny nativity scenes for the Magi. How cute is that? And they were gifts for your friends and family. That is a great idea with your ties, Mina. Mina would appreciate this next story. My mom, uh, my dad had a lot of ties, and you can find ties at the secondhand stores and stuff if you know you run into them every now and then. But my mom had a bag of ties that I believe they were all my dad's and maybe some of her dad's. And um, she took uh, in the in our particular church, we have a podium that the minister stands behind and on the podium there sometimes there are these coverings or their their tablecloths or the little hanging ties uh, banners of some sort hanging off of the podium and then our minister wears a robe and it has this long it's kind of a scarf but it's a stole. It's called a stole in, in when, when you wear it with a gown. And the stole goes around the neck of the minister on top of their gown. And it hangs down on both sides in front. And then they cut off about to the knee. And they're called stoles. And the choir people wear stoles in the choir robes. And they're usually like a V cut in the front of it. And they're called stoles that they wear in the church. But my mom, my mom took uh, the patterns of the, of the ministers. At the time, he was a male minister. And she made him a stole out of ties. And she made a podium cloth that dripped over the front of the podium out of ties. It was a tablecloth made out of ties. And she made several um, several things for the church. There was one, there was another one that was just a, a, a runner that went across the front of the table and then hung down on each side of the altar. And that was made out of ties, men's ties. And they, they used them on Father's Day. And it was kind of a, you know, an honorary thing for fathers. It was a good thing. <laughs> True story. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to get back busy over here. I'm, I am chit-chatting way too much. Now on my, on my uh, pumpkin here, I'm going to get back to busy now. Get back to busy. I'm not going to read chat. You all chat among yourselves. <laughs> you have to have me. I should be in the chat room and you girls, somebody should be up here working. That's what should happen. Yeah, somebody else should be filming, streaming while I uh, while I chat with the chat room. <laughs> I told you I slept all day, so I am full of energy right now. And I just drank a Coke. I'm extremely warm. I'm going to turn my fan on. That would be a helpful thing. Oh, get some air going here. So it's starting to look like it's starting to look like that pumpkin. Look. It's starting to look like it. We're getting lucky. It's starting to look like it. There's a little more green down in there. 
And I probably should get my other tools out and I could go a little faster. Hi, Joe. Uh, you on the phone? Yeah. Okay. So some of my other tools that I like to use, I not only have, I've got a variety of, of needles. There's a medium and a large and an extra small and a small. I like my medium and my small needle really well. And I also like this one here. It's got three needles in it. And you can see that one of the needles is shorter than the others. This needle over here is shorter. You can see it's shorter. <laughs> and it's a small needle with, it's, it's a probably a medium needle with a large needle on here. And uh, they do work okay together with this tool. But one of the needles doesn't belong because I can't get this thing screwed in all the way. That means I, uh, I put a wrong size of a needle in here. And it might be the large needle that doesn't belong because I can't get it shut all the way. But I'm not going to worry about it at this point. I still can use the tool. And when I take it apart again, I'll fix the needles because I bought me some more needles to fix it with. But this, this is like uh, felting three times as fast as a single needle. But I enjoy the single needle. I really do. <laughs> I think a lot of people do that that do this uh, hobby. They uh, they enjoy the the single needle. But I am getting fast done faster. And there's no uh, there's no end in felting. You can felt and felt and felt and felt and felt uh, before you have to quit. I'm trying to decide if I want to put some other collars in here and I'm uh, envisioning just a tiny bit of brown and this this is this might be the brown I'm looking for and I'm just going to add a little brown to this you can't really see what I did right here but I added it and it does uh, make a difference in the end even though I you can't really see this this brown it's so uh it's a neutral shade i you know you're adding volume you're adding values to the color that's already down and it's blending it's blending and it makes a beautiful beautiful ending uh after you get done just be patient as you as you uh add your fibers and you just you you look take a step back and look at these fibers and I see orange I see red I see some red in there and you can see the contrast the red on the the hat over here and then there's a little bit of red here a little bit of red down under there and under there you know so you see these values these color values pulling pulling and on top you see like like there might be some green in there but there might be some of this brown some of this brown in there uh you might see some yellow in there and maybe maybe a tad of white you might or peach you know there might be a little bit of peachy white right there and we're just talking a real small amount so when you look at your art Look at what you see, you know, and put what you see and what's pleasing to your eye in here. So I've got a little bit of brown. I'm going to add some more to the other ones, too. And then in the stalk, the stalk is green, and I like the green that I have, but I think I'm going to mix in some more colors with it. Uh, it could be any kind of neutral colors. It could be a lighter green, a darker green, and there looks like it might be a little bit of yellow here. The same way in this this pixie hat over here has some green, dark green, light green, and maybe some yellow on it. And you can match it up with the uh, the stalk and pull from this side of the page. You're pulling from this side 
to the to the pixie and then this corner to the opposite corner you see how it crisscrosses that's a good thing that is a good thing So we're getting a little bit educated in here. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Renee. Hi, everybody that come in. We're felting a pumpkin. Come, come and play with this. This reminds me of the peacock <laughs> with all the feathers. <laughs> that would be fun to make. We can make a peacock sometime. I wouldn't mind doing that. Now I got to get back up here to the edges of my pumpkin. And I want to, there are uh, two. Um, the edges are not my fancy just yet. I want the edges to be uh, a little more 3D. Talking about 3D, that's a good subject I could talk about. Oh, Cheryl says my voice is making her sleepy. Wake up, wake up, Cheryl. <laughs> um, uh, when you come up on your flat surface with your felting and you're popping it up and making it thick, you're giving it depth. You know, you're giving some depth and it's making it 3D. Anytime you can see behind your the front of your project, the, top, the, the, the depth of it. If you can see something up here and then see something behind it and behind it and behind it, that's called 3D. And uh, you remember the... Um, Oh, I know you guys have seen these. The Viewmasters when we were kids. And we would put these round discs in the Viewmasters. And they were 3D. You could see the clouds in behind the guy flying in the sky. <laughs> or whatever you were looking at. It was They were all 3D. Do you all remember those? Viewmasters. They were 3D. <laughs> Cheryl says, it's my voice and the cold medication. <laughs> yes, Cheryl. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I was just talking to uh, Janet Nash, and I'm, I'm surprised she didn't step in. She might have been watching from a from afar but she's um she is i do have some update for from her she um you know she's been taking care of her mom and dad forever for like a month now she's been up there with them at their house and they're both in the hospital but they're doing they're do, both doing better and she's making arrangements of uh, her her mother has some a little dementia and she's just not real safe by herself. And um, and so her her father is in a different hospital. It just it's really tugging on her in all in all directions. But he um, he has become sick and he is not able to go back to the house. Uh, he's he's not strong enough to go back to the house at this time. So he went into a, a facility and it was also called palliative care. If anybody understands what that means, it's a, it's a place where, uh, cause he's in his late eighties, late, late eighties. And she's in her early nineties. And it's a place where the nurses will take care of you and you don't have to, uh, you don't have to go to the doctors as often it, there they'll come to you you know when you're in palliative care and they'll take care of you and help you with anything that you need and they'll you know they they just help you and so um 
So she was going to have to put her mom in an assistant living care facility too. And she says, oh, if I could just find a place that would take them both and they could be together. So she has found a place for both of them. So she thinks her mom is getting to go maybe tomorrow or the next day. She's going to check into her new place. And and uh, if any of y'all know anything about assisted living, that they could be, they're angels. They are angel places to go. It isn't anything like it used to be back when I was a little girl and we'd go visit the nursing home. No, it's not like that anymore. The nursing homes are so improved these days and they are so catered. They're, they're catered to you. And uh, you, the person that lives there is the king and the queen. And they take care of you like a king and a queen, the way you deserve to be treated. And so she's found a place that's going to take her dad too. And so that means they're going to be together and they're, and she, and they have separate rooms. They'll have, I think, now there are places that I have heard of that they that you can get a double room and they connect with your spouse. I don't know the situation with hers, but I think they're going to be in the same facilities and and then she can at least, you know, cuz she can still walk and get around and she could they could take her over to see her husband and they can be together during the day. So I think it's wonderful. I think it's a, I think it's just angels protecting us and protecting them and protecting Janet. Uh, as she goes through this this transition and and I and I pray for Tanya because Tanya uh, our, our Tanya McGuire she put her mama in assisted living and so I hope and she's and I think her mom is still able to get around and do a few things and I think her mom I'm hoping that her mom will love the company because she's not going to be alone anymore you know, and they don't have to wait around for other people to call them. They could go and visit other people right away. So that's going to be the good news. And the nurses will be there and they'll, they will, you know, they're there at their every need. So I'm just, I'm just thankful, thankful for the, the nursing homes that we have today and the places that we can uh, put both our parents together. I think that's awesome. So, uh, so please continue to keep Janet in our prayers. It will be just a matter of time before she will be back streaming with us on Monday mornings. She's been doing some vlogs, and you know, it's just it's not the same thing as playing a playing a game with her. But she'll be back. She'll be back to do her games, and she'll be back in uh, uh, in full in full steam ahead. She'll be back real soon, and. Um, I can't wait till till she gets back home. And uh, so she she's able to go home now a little more frequently since the parents aren't coming back to the house. Uh, and she has to tend to the house. And she's got family up there as well. She's got an uncle that she's been visiting. So I'm thinking that that has been a great bonding situation there for her too. So, but we'll, the things are looking up, things are looking better. And the, it's just like the little devotion I said Tuesday about the gardenia. You know, we cut the bushes back and we pruned it back. We pruned it back so far that we didn't even get any flowers in the spring. We didn't, we waited and we didn't get any flowers. But come again around to the next season, the flowers started blooming again. And so we will see those blooms soon. <laughs> we will. Okay, I downed that one. That's all I get. Till Joe brings me another one. <laughs> so anyway, I'm kind of liking my pumpkin here. I'm going to get back to the edges. And let's see, it's 7 o'clock. So maybe I need to quit. I need to quit the pumpkin for now. And um, uh, I was talking about 3D. And I don't, I didn't get to tell what I was going to tell, but there's a, um, oh, we're getting ready to come up to another hop. We, we missed, we took last month off on our hop and uh, Mayor LTA is hosting another hop in November and it's the second Friday of the month and it's called Dollarama. D-I-O-R-A-M-A. 
Dallarama art for our November hop. And it's the Friday hop because there's Friday hops and Saturday hops. So anyway, it's the second Friday of the month. And that will be coming up a week from tomorrow on the 12th. So we will be doing an extra video on the 12th. And it's the hop it starts early in the morning. And it takes a break at noon. <laughs> and then it starts back up in the afternoons. And it finishes up with Mary at the end of the day. And Mary hosts the hops. She starts it in the morning, gets us going. And if anybody can't make the hop, she fills in. <laughs> because our Mary is that kind of a girl. She can step in at any time and help out. And then the evening crew will be on for the evening part of the hop. And we stream one after the other when we do hop. And there will be a schedule that will be posted in Fibsville and um, in other places uh, on the Internet. So stay tuned if you are interested in the hop and you like to watch it, of course. Uh, we will be, uh, be doing it. And it's called Dialorama. Well, that means it's a 3D um Dalarama is like a 3d picture and i don't know if i can explain it or not but it's anything in 3d like i was trying to tell you here if we keep building up on this it'll become 3d and um so uh also you might see a Dalarama not just in a felting or a painting, you can still do it in a painting. You can build up and build up and build up until it's 3D. Uh, but you also see it in uh, little box, shadow boxes, and you build a scenery. And, it, and you know the shaker cards? Well, to me, a shaker card is a little card, and it's got a space in the middle, and you shake it, and it's got glitter and confetti in the middle of it. That is considered a dollarama. It's a view in the front, and there's something in the middle, and then there's a scenery in the back. And that, to me, is a dialorama. And it's any kind of a, a, a shadow box. And I remember when I was a little girl, we had this showboat. It was a hot pink showboat. It was a boat, like a paddle wheel boat. And it was a stage. And it had all these little different slots in it. And we would put all of the backgrounds, and we would have, like, a little stage, and we would we would play. We would make up a story, and it was a, like a diorama. And you could play with the chat with the stages and put different sceneries in daytime, nighttime, you know. And and uh, and then we had these little dance, these little uh, figurines that stood up and they acted out. That to me is a diorama. Uh, if anybody else knows of another way to explain it, uh, I welcome that. Uh, I have got a dialorama that I have made, and uh, it's a felting project. And I have showed it before, and I will show it again a week from tomorrow. Uh, so you have to come back and, and see it. It's beautiful. It's it's fun, and and it's felted. So, uh, but I can explain a little bit, you know, by doing this uh, corn, this stalk in the middle of my pumpkin that I'm making. Uh, it's making it, I'm making it 3D. And, and that's at what, what we call a dialorama. So I'm putting some more fibers here. And I twisted them. And I'm going to leave it fluffy to make it look like a stem. So that is 3D. <laughs> so does anybody else have a have another uh, definition of dollarama that they can share with us, or something maybe that they've seen as a dollarama?
I think of a a kaleidoscope. <laughs> Would that be considered a dollarama? You know what a kaleidoscope is? It's that little long thing, and you lay down, and you look up at the sky, and you turn it, and it makes like uh, stained glass pictures and diamonds and sparkly things. Okay, you had to make them in school using shoe boxes. Yes, that would be it. And make a little scenery. <laughs> there you go. Well, the one that I have that I made, I made it in a picture frame. And it's 3D off of the frame. And this here is going to be 3D as well. Um, because you can see the uh the stalk is built up and i'm going to build the pumpkin up too and make it look uh textury <laughs> it's going to be a, a big bump it's going to be high not just flat so anyway that's my my news <laughs> So, uh, so I will be back Saturday night, and uh, we'll be back to playing some games. Yes, it would be one, too. Okay. And, you know, uh, variation, variety, variety is the spice of life. And when we put our own little spin on things... Um, it may may not be a traditional Dollarama that you're used to seeing. It may not be the uh, example that they show you what a Dollarama is. <laughs> it may not be the same example, but it still creates the same ending, the same solution, or the same uh, the, the ending is still the same. It's a depth. It's something in depth. My mama and my dad, all of their lives, all of the all of my life, I've heard this term. And she said, and and my mother says, Well, I know about these things because I've studied it in depth. In depth. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you have. Oh, well, then you're the expert of it if you've studied it in depth. <laughs> and and mom and dad would always uh, respect each other's <laughs> when they say, say, I've studied this in depth, you know, <laughs> and that's always been a happy, happy sentence <laughs> in my, in my family, in our, in our life. That's, that's good. That's a good thing. And it's always funny to hear each other say it because we know, we all know where it come from and we all know what it means and, and it's just an ongoing uh, little, I don't know, would, it, would that be a joke? An, on, an ongoing happy moment. <laughs> it just never ends because we're always studying something in depth. Never ending, a never ending smile. <laughs> That's true. So I am giving my pumpkin some depth and I'm enjoying it and it takes a little time and it's easy to do it if you if you work on it slowly it just, just it just works out easier see these this one over here I'm not finished by any means so bear with me I am going to put this away here in just a few more minutes and we'll get something else. I'll do a fall page in my harvest book. And I am happy how it has come along. It's coming along quite nicely. I'm going to work on my harvest book all the way through Thanksgiving. And then we're going to start on Christmas. Right after Thanksgiving, we will start on a Christmas book. Um, I have in my possession some new 
brand new. What you put it at? Cardstock. I've got some brown, uh, brown cardstock. Craft, craft cardstock. This is called craft craft cardstock, and it's in the brown uh, or the tan or the khaki. So I was thinking, now I could change my mind, and you all can help me change my mind if you want to. Uh, but I was thinking of a Christmas book about a quarter of this size and make a Christmas book uh, for Christmas and put Christmas things in it, like a little Christmas glue book. And I was thinking that we can use something like this, or maybe we can use something else. Um, it doesn't have to be the cardstock, but uh, but red and white would be pretty on this. I may want to switch over to black and do red and white on the black. Now, that might be a, a better option than the brown. I'll do whatever you all say, okay? I'll do whatever you all say. Oh, my goodness, Janice. I would love to have your, your uh, Christmas cards. I can send you 50. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, if you send me your Christmas cards, I will make something out of them. And we'll make a Christmas book. And I can either use that or I could use, uh, I might have enough black to use or I can paint these. I can paint this brown. I can paint them red, white, and black or red, white, and green. Um, I might be able to find some more uh, Christmas colors in my stash. So, so that not totally a uh, a bad idea. I do have plenty, and I repeat, I have plenty of red stock paper. I and this might be my better solution. Um, I've got I've got a bunch of this red, plenty of the red cardstock, and I can make a book out of it. And um, as a matter of fact, I just changed my mind. I'm going from brown to red. <laughs> I'm going to use the red cardstock, but we'll do this right after Thanksgiving, so we can be thinking about it and contemplating. And uh, and we can recycle cards, and I, and I love to make Christmas clusters. It's one of my favorite things to do, and I've done them before here on here, and I think that's what I want to do again. I want to do Christmas clusters, and um, and if you want to do a game of it. We can send each other Christmas clusters uh, and do a Christmas cluster exchange. And then I can put maybe put my clusters in this little word Christmas book. That would be nice. I can make a chunky book. So that's kind of, that sounds good to me. <laughs> but we'll work on it right after Thanksgiving. In the meantime, I want to continue to work on Thanksgiving things the same way we did Halloween. You know, we worked on Halloween right up until Halloween Eve, and we ended it with a party, and we had a great time during Halloween. And I and I would not mind showing you some of the Halloween pages that we did together. Uh, we, we really did quite a number of Halloween uh, monsters and games and things. So I, I, I'll, I can show you that before we uh, start on the fall page. But I'm going to go ahead and quit on this. And uh, I'm, I'm making great progress. I am, I am. 
I love doing this. I like doing it all. I like to do it all. So that's going to be it for that. I am going to put my needles in a safe space. I put two of them in my pin cushion. And then these other needles I will put in a box. In my box. For safekeeping. So they won't break. So. And this will go up here in my special little permanent place that I always keep it. And we will work on this again soon. I'll put some of my wool away. Like that. And we'll put these two little babies over here for safekeeping. And let me get my book out. So we're going to do Christmas. Woohoo! <laughs> Christmas. So this is what we did last week uh, on Tuesday. And I thought I would just do a backwards flip here and show you. Uh, some of the things that we've been doing. And uh, this was Tuesday, and this was Tuesday. So we're starting to do fall things. We'll do another, we can do another fall picture. And this was done uh, on, on uh, trick or treat night. We did a little, quite a few pumpkins, and he's one of my favorites. He did. He was cute too. This was a, a a monster, a monster, and then this was a roll of scarecrow. He's talking on the cell phone to his his bestie. Mhm. Mm Hi, Becky. Hi, everybody that came in the room. Hi, everybody in the balcony. I'm just going back over some of the Halloween things that we did for th uh, for October. This was fun. She's got long hair. I had to put her hair up on the, fold her hair up. <laughs> Cute. I love it. I love it. I want some more of it. <laughs> so I folded her hair up. And then this was a, a collage. Oh, this was a Halloween party. We did a Halloween party over here. And they're all dressed up to go to the party. That was a fun story night. And here's another roll of scarecrow. And this was a fishing story. Remember the fishing story last Tuesday, a week from Tuesday? Check your bait. <laughs> it was called Check Your Bait. And this was with, uh, with Rebecca. Bingo with Rebecca. And I played bingo over on this side. And here was the first game. We played two games. So if you all like to play bingo over Rebecca's, she does a fun game too. We have the we had the Halloween bingo. Now we need to do um, a Thanksgiving bingo and do Thanksgiving prompts. Maybe I can do another prompt page uh, either tonight or, or Saturday. We need to do Halloween or Thanksgiving prompts, so it won't be witches. <laughs> It'll be a lot of pumpkins. But these were so much fun. This was bingo. And every time I surprise myself, this was a surpri happy surprise. I just, I used uh, a little bit of black paper and I used a sticker, but the rest of it was Sharpies and I used a couple of stickers. This was, a, or a stamp rather. 
this was the only stamp. The rest I drew or I cut out. I had a punch. And I never did find my punches for these for these guys. And here was another prompts. Haunted Bingo. That was cute. And I got to use my expand paste. And this was just some regular. This was Bingo Bingo too. This was the this was the rhyme, the rhyme prompts, and this was the fellow, the the felon with the melon. He was a felon with the melon, and he was supposed to be behind bars, but he broke out and he went out to meet his girlfriend. Oh, Sharon, we could roll a turkey. And this was a stencil, uh, a stencil lesson that I taught y'all how to do a stencil. And I love doing this. If you ever want to know how to do this again, let me know. I'll be glad to do it again. It's so fun. And it looks so cute. And this, we named this one Charlie's Angels, didn't we? We're still, and this goes back to the end of thanks, uh, September. And we started getting some Halloween cards. This was from Mindy. And I did a little Mindy page that's cute with the envelope down here. And I have a little card in here. That was so cute. Some tags. And this was the last part of September, too. <laughs> now, you see, this is an example. This was bingo. And I used swashy tape for my, for my Dobbins. And it was with Rebecca. This is a good example of a page that I don't particularly care for. But it was fun that we got to do it. And it helps me to grow, to do other things that I I love and that I, I do better. I do better and I do better. You know, I, I get warmed up, you know, and then I do something like this that I think is real good. And I'm I'm not an artist, but I thought this was great for sketching, you know, and I loved using the uh, markers, the, uh, the Sharpies. So this was a good example. You can't always make beautiful things, but it was a piece of art that I did, and I'm proud to do it. I'm proud to show it to you, and we have to have some clutter <laughs> to do other prettier things. See, I was real happy with the corn stalks on this. I that was that was butter. That was extra butter on my bread there. You know. So, so we all we all have good art and better art and not so good art. And this art was different. This was bingo. But I loved the background. I love what I did in the background because I used those little ink squares, uh, ink pads that I had to make those little squares. And I used I used uh, text paper in the background. So I really there's a lot about that that I love. But I love the music border, using the music paper for the border. So that's way back in September. So that's as far back as I, I think I'm going to go. So when this was a this was a uh, rainbow. So now I'm going to turn turn back to the back again. Hey Joe, can I have one of them them drinks again? Sure. I'm talking up a storm. I'm thirsty as a, as a cow. So we're going to we're going to do we are going to paint something here but I thought I would put this over to the side and we would do a let me show you the harvest book again I knew I had some more paper over here some mail found some more mail that needs to go out <laughs> I did that has to go in the mailbox tomorrow too but this is my fall book and uh harvest our harvest book i originally was going to do do uh october and november in here but uh, it didn't work out that way because there's just too much to do in november october and then there's too much to do in november so it's turned out to be a november book instead harvest book instead and we will be working on these And these are just some extra things that I, I am going to put in in my book that I've gotten from Happy Mail and stuff. So we will be 
we will be using some of those things. But this this page is done. This page is done. This is our fall thing. Thank you, sweetie. Did you get off the phone? Yeah. Was that Janelle or Jill? Oh, that was uh, Janelle. Or, okay. So, uh, so we're going to do another one of these real quick, or at least start it, get it started. And then we'll paint something. And we'll pick something out. I don't have anything picked out. If you do have a something fall or Thanksgiving that's kind of a whimsical to paint, we could paint this. I wouldn't mind painting this guy, the, the pixies. Let's paint this one. We're felting it. Let's paint it. So uh, I've been talking so much. I'm thirsty. Thirsty much. So here's a page, and we can even, maybe I can just work on this page and get this side glued down. I got this napkin over here to go on this side of the book. So uh, let me get my paintbrush here, and I'm going to... Do this with my paintbrush, and we'll put this down here. And I got to get my, uh, I got some glue over here. So what you know, baby? Mm -hmm. Nothing. How's Janelle? Uh, okay. Is she okay? Yeah, she. I think they're, they might be getting laid off this week. I was wondering if she was, how was her back? Uh, well, you know, she didn't say anything about it, so it must be okay. She got better. She had some back problems, and uh, she went to the chiropractor, which I highly recommend. I love going to the chiropractor when I need them. And uh, so he must have straightened her out. <laughs> no pun intended. Oh, yes. Pun intended. Pun intended. We like puns. We like corny. Don't we, Joe? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all see her at night, girls. She thinks she's a comic relief on tour. <laughs> you do, too. <laughs> You do too. What goes around comes around. Oh, I was sleepy. I didn't get sleep all night. I, I tell you, I don't know what happened with all that, but I just know that I needed it. Did I did? Are we doing a turkey roll? Roll a turkey. Well, we were think we can. I think we Jenny can. Jenny Wimbar wants to know. Well, yes, we can do a turkey roll. Uh -huh. Everybody make a turkey at the, at the, while they're doing it, and show the turkey at the end of the row. At the end of the show. So, hello, Brenda. Hello, hello. Oh, Nina. Mina, Nina. Oh. It's Mina. Mina. I had a, a favorite aunt. It's a cute name. I had a favorite aunt, and her name was Nina. Yeah, Nina. And and every time every time we went somewhere, the people would say Nina. They called her Nina, like Mina. And it wasn't Mina. It was Nina. And it was it wasn't. Yeah. Nina, it was my Nina, and she she she'd tell him every time she'd say no, it's Nina. <laughs> Nina Lee. Nina Lee. That's yeah. what I was gonna say. I thought it was Lee. Yep. And I can show you a picture of her. You know why? 
because I've got a chip off the old block right here. This is a favorite thing that um, I got from my grandparents. Um, and my grandfather, I, well, my grandmother or my grandfather got this um, block. And it was from the photo place. And, and then you would get your photos made up. And so the, this is the top, and then this is the bottom, and then there's four sides. So this was Nina when she was a senior in high school. Let me focus as she is. She was pretty. She was a doll baby. She had a sweetheart face and a pixie to go with it. She was beautiful. And then this one is my grandmother. And she obviously got her looks from her. She's beautiful, too. And then this one over here was my mom with my aunt. Mm -hmm. And goodness me, gracious, I see grandchildren in her and my mother. Yeah. I can see my brothers. Yeah. Yeah, little brother, I can see I can see uh, Jessica and I can see Julia Ann in there and I can see Erica in there. Of course, that's the same picture as my aunt. And then here's another picture of my grandfather and my grandmother. And here they were retired and they have Florida tans. <laughs> they uh, golf. They like to golf a little bit. They had a very wonderful life. So anyway, I don't know how I got a hold of this in here, but it's in my room. <laughs> it's in the there's, room. There's Renee. Hi, Renee. Yes. And Sherry Vance. Hi. Sherry's in the room. How you doing, Sherry? Good to see you, ladies. Ladies, ladies. Best ladies I know. <laughs> Keeps my wife in tow. That's true. That's gotta be a good Keeps woman me to keep in my line. wife in tow. Keeps me in line. Oh. Brenda D. Mack. <laughs> it's M M C Muck. Mac is M A C. Oh Muck. Uh-huh. But that's okay. <laughs> it's not true. MC is muck. MC muck. 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 Yeah. It's MC. But I'm sure she'll understand if you say Mac. Or Sister Cheryl. <laughs> Thank you. They were they all were pretty ladies. Yeah, they got I I could show you all. The, I think I showed most of the pictures of all the old cars her grandfather had. Yeah, my grandfather was a car buff. He was a real car buff. When the cars were good. Awesome. So I just need a little piece right there. Who's Beetle? Beetlejuice. Uh, Beetle, uh, Beetle Chick. Beetle, yeah, hi Beetle. Hi Beetle Chick. And let's see. There's a few mojos laughing. <laughs> Everybody's laughing. That's good. Be happy. Let's be happy. So I got this page Ooh, done. Sleepy. Kind of talked myself into uh, painting this pixie pumpkin over here that we were felting. So I think we will. Yeah. I'm going to, since I've got so much glue over here on this little baby, I'm going to let it dry. And, uh, and I like it. Good, good, good. I like it a lot. 
And, you know, I'm thinking, uh, you know, I have a little glue pot that I use a lot. And um, I do use regular glue and I use um, glue all, which is a little bit thicker than the regular school glue, but it's not as thick as the tacky glue. But I'm thinking that this bottle is handy to use. So I think I'll get me, uh, I've got another bottle up there. When it gets empty, I'll put some glue all in one. And I'll have one for school glue, one for glue all, and one for tacky glue. And then I won't have to have all these extra little bottles around. There's always room for improvement in your yeah. table. Janice Blinds is doing a lifetime channel. Is doing a... On the Highway to Heaven series. Lifetime is a TV station, and it's doing a new Highways to Heaven with Jill Scott as the angel. The premiere is Saturday at 8 p.m. Okay. Gotcha. I understand. I understand. Is it an hour long? Is it just an hour? Or is it going to be a movie? If it's well, if it's a TV series, it shouldn't be any more than either half hour or an hour. I would think an hour. Yeah. So if if that's the case, then you can watch me before and leave and watch the premiere and then come back at eight o'clock. Oh, it's at eight. Hmm. Because I go off at nine usually. And then you can tell us all about it later. <laughs> yeah, the old ones were an hour. I don't know. Well, I don't. I don't, I won't mind, Janice. I won't mind at all. I won't get upset. So I'm going to let this dry, and I think this goes well together. And we'll maybe we'll finish this Saturday or later tonight if we have time. I need to get this book out from underneath the, the one on top. Just put your hand there. There you go. Pull, pull, this one? pull. There you go. Pull, pull. It. There you go. Good. So I'm going to paint this. We were felting it. Oh, you were felting it, yeah. So uh, I've already got a little bit of gesso down. So let me get some paint. Let's oh, see. Need any cardstock? <laughs> no, not yet. But I, I do have, I've decided, to, you know, I've got so much red cardstock that our Christmas book's going to be red instead of the brown. He's playing with the dogs. He's not even listening to me. <laughs> yeah, it's going to end up red. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, let's see. Dog, There's brown on the top the and orange on the bottom. So I'm going to get all of the oranges out because I like to blend. I've kind of got an earache. I don't know why, but my ear was bothering me last night. And my ear is bothering me again tonight. I might need to take something for my ear. Yeah, you might. Janelle, she had a... My ear's starting to bother me. She had a bug. Not a bug, but a... Or uh, yearly changeover in weather. This is the time that back home, the cold weather, where if you work outside and get hot and sweaty and go outside and then go home at, and work midnight. I want some green. Fitting some yep. collars out. Get you sick. Well, I kind of got an earache. You didn't clear your ears, did you? Yeah, I did yesterday. Well, that's how you got it. Well, I clean my ears every day, though. You clean the wax out. Well, it's colder, though, now. You're going into a change pattern. <laughs> I guess you're right, Joe. Thank you. That's all you had to say. I'll share that. So I'm going to get my paintbrush. Get a paintbrush that I like. And I'm going to put a little bit of brown at the top. And 
and I'm painting. I'm a painting. Any, oh, you want me to post a picture in case you want to paint with me? It was online on my fa on my book yesterday. Felting and painting. Well, there's Miss Esther. Hi, Esther. Howdy, howdy, howdy. I didn't see you there. We're painting. Watch your thing. Uh, Beth finger her computer her phone so she can get the thing up. Okay, I posted the picture if anybody wants to okay. paint along. So we started out felting this guy and now we're going to paint it. Oh, it's dry. So that's okay. Won't hurt a thing. So I don't know what color this was. It was called Burnt Umber, and it is brown. It sure is. That looks like a color I know. I don't even know. Oh, but it's going to be a great background. Oh, okay. See how dark it is up here? Uh-huh. Look, too bad you can't put just a flash of water with it. Well, I will if I can't get it to spread out. And I'm not done. As you can see, it's a work in progress. A work in progress. Work in progress. And I can put some water on it. Yeah. Make it go three times as far. It will. But I want the light and the dark uh, va values. I am in the value tonight. That's my word. The value of the of the color of the shade. We're we're looking for that perfect value. It's got a, a, a burnt reddish brown. It does. It has it has some kind of a redness in it, and it has some kind of burnt in it. Burnt top side. I hear the kitty. Oh, oh boy, on. here comes trouble. <laughs> she walked right past Nora's face real slow. And she's not afraid of Nora. I know, but once she got past her, she tried it. She tr took a little fast try. <laughs> she said, All right, I made it. I'm going to tease you until I get by. Yeah. Yeah, what are you doing? Come here, little girl. Come here. It was, gee, I should have, if I had time to work on the, those bushes on the garage, I would have took you up there. You'd been right at home, wouldn't you? She can get up on the garage. Yeah. Well, don't don't tear down her favorite ladder or how she gets up there. <laughs> Do you know how she I'm gets up sure. there? Well, I'm not sure how she gets up there now, but yeah, she's got a couple of... I think she's got a, a ladder inside the garage, like a, a drop door. <laughs> like an attic? Yeah, like an attic, and she gets on the roof, and nobody else can get up there. Is that how she does it? I know it's funny when I put that tuba, that 12-foot tuba floor up there that one night, and she come right, right down it. It was funny. Yeah. Because I didn't think she'd do it. That she was, oh, yeah, she was on the roof, and we didn't know that she could get down. Yeah. And so we put a, a board up to this to the gutter so that she could walk down the board well she she just jumped <laughs> like she didn't need the board <laughs> she came down the tree she, there's these little little trees bushes and stuff at the edge of the gutter where where the uh the gutter is and she just goes over there and uh, she, she had no problem and goes down i don't see how she's not afraid head, head first is pretty pretty sticky now I got this um, kind of marbly looking on purpose because if you look at the picture, it's got some values in it yeah. that are you can sort of see light and dark and black and things like that. Sure. So that's what I was attempting, and I think I I think I got it. Yeah. 
So, yeah. I think I achieved. Your glasses see more than mine, that's for sure. Yeah. See the light in the darkness? It looks like a, a bushes in the background of, in a dark night or something in the back. Yeah. Looks like one Well, of my, that's kind of like what I did. Looks like one of my Brillo pads after I cook. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then what? Then what? Then you put it in the dishwasher and hope it comes clean. Anyway, I like that. So I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm going to go towards the, here is spiced carrot and pure pumpkin right yeah, there. That sounds like pure country. We're going to do a little bit of both. And I'm going to go for. So let that dry, dry real good first. Yeah. Uh, no, no. This is good. Uh, so this is going to be my pumpkin down here. Okay. And I'm kind of going to do it the same way. I'm going to use a, a, a nice brush, a good brush. And I'm going to uh, just do some swirls with this pump, with this collar. And I will drip drop some more of the other pump collar, the other per orange, and I'll blend them. So this is all going to be orange down here. Yeah. And then I'll put in the lines and I'll put in some more values for the ribs. The ribs of the pumpkin because we know what the ribs are. We looked it up. It's what holds them together. It makes the curvy parts. Yeah. Just like a skeleton. Ribs, the skeleton didn't have no ribs. He wasn't, you know, Rib, the ribs of a skeleton are made up of bone. The ribs on the pumpkin are ridges. Okay. We can try to explain it to you, Joe, but we can't make you understand. No, we can't. I don't believe that. Don't believe we can't make you understand it. I, I just, I'm not like you. I can't just, just throw a bunch of colors together and it look right. Yeah. yeah well, like you have to practice and you have to try. If you never try, you will never know what you can do. And I think mm -hmm. by trying, years and years of me trying to do things, they... You know, every time I try again, you know, it gets a little bit better. Wow. Just saying. I'm a liking all that. And I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to let that dry. And we'll get the heat gun out. <clears throat> I'm a saying, let's see. You like the brown? Angie, come back. I'm painting, Angie. I'm painting. Oh, the Ganones. Uh, I think Sharon posted another picture. Let me see if I can go back and get it. I saw the one. This is what we're painting right now. And we were felting it a minute ago, but now we're painting it. Sharon did this one, and it's a Christmas gnome, and I think there's another one. Isn't that sweet? That is so cute. I love it. <laughs> Sharon, I'm going to give you a thumbs up for that one. Little gnome. Okay, I don't see it. But I saw what something a minute ago. I was going so fast. 
Here it is. Just a minute. I'm trying. I'm, I'm holding it in two hands. Aren't they cute? That is going to be so pretty on the table for Christmas. Sharon, you're you outdone yourself. I love the little tinsel sprigs of fibers. Uh, they look, look at all those little fibers. That one is uh, eyelash thread, and the other one looks like foil tinsel. So cute. They got feet and everything. That is precious. And they've got little wreaths. And that one little girl, little wreath looks like there's bell. You could put a bell on the top of their hat. I got baby bells. Angie said she's going to sew for a little bit. It looks like it's still wet up here, but I think it's dry. It's, it's dry. Yeah. It's got different colors in it. It, it was old paint, so it's hard to tell. Might be some varnish or something in it. The gold is beautiful. Gold? Yellow, whatever you call that. The yeah. orange? Where's the orange? Oh, it's not orange in the blue. It's not orange? No. Look. Well, that is, but it's not orange. It looks more yellowy online. Yeah. All right, that's enough. That's enough of that. So I used a uh, pumpkin, or did I use spiced carrot? I don't remember. What oh, spiced carrot? Uh, this one is pumpkin orange. And let me get my picture back. So that's what I'm going by here. I'll find out in a minute if this is the uh, other orange. One moment, please. So let's try this one. I can't tell if it's different or the same. But anyway, it's on there. So we got another layer or something. We feed them puppies dog today. Uh -huh. Did you feed them dogs today? Uh, some, I guess. I think you did. You fed her in that bowl that they had last night, didn't you? Yeah. I think she's wanting more. So this is a, a hump and a hump and a hump and a hump. And I need a hump here. Oh, I can see it. I can vision this now. Okay, good. This one's good. It's hard. It's hard to capture things sometimes. Um, it's hard. I'm, I, it's just, uh, I can't really explain it to capture the true picture of something. You got to, you got to vision it. And if you can picture it in your mind, you can paint it. It, it just takes a minute to get it looking that way. Just saying. I got a vision. So there's my pumpkin there. And I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of the green for uh, the center of the stalk. If I could get that open. And I'm just going to put a little bit of green right there. Maybe like that, and I'm going to make a little stalk. Uh, 
and and I'm going to leave this textured. Uh, I want it textured. So that's cute. It's all right. I'm not done. I'm going to put a little bit more on it and make it lumpy. Lumpy. I want to make it lumpy. We'll give we'll give it a slight panorama look. It's not a panorama because it's not in a frame or a box. But it is going to try to be a little bit 3D. So I'm gonna put that green over here. I don't need it right now. And I did I've got another green here that's a thicket. It's called thicket. And it's a type of green. And I'm going to use it out of the bottle. And it's really thick. Because it's really old. <laughs> going on here. This is looking exactly what I want it to see. So I wanted to get these um, ridges down in here. What do you think? Does it look like a pumpkin, Joe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's coming around. And I'm just going to maybe just hint around the edges. I'm still not done. So don't be alarmed. We're still going to do the do the best. This is good. Okay. So let me rinse my brush out. Put the lid back on this one. It's the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. <laughs> That's right, Cheryl. <laughs> I'm getting all tanked up. Go and give her a bite to eat, Joe. Are you tired? No, I'm not going to do it. She's... Okay. She's crying. Now, um, I'm going to get some more shades. This one is a, is a, it's a orangey. But it's got a hint of pink. And it's called Flamingo Coral. And this is a type of popular shade in Florida. It's a it's a coral shade. It's got a little pink tint to the orange. And you really can't tell in the bottle. But it has a pink label on it. And you know what? It also says pumpkin on it. I think I have refilled this uh, bottle up with orange paint that I had in a jar, bigger jar. Never mind, just strike all that. That's what I've done. It's got a new it's got a new shade in the jar and uh and that's why it looks more orangey. That's what it did. But there is a coral a flamingo coral <laughs> In the paint department of Apple Barrels, that does have a, a pink tinge to it, but it's not this one. But I am going to use it, and I'm going to uh, I'm just going to use it on my brush and do some pouncing with my brush again. I did order me some new paint. Um, it'll probably be here next week. Uh, I ordered me a set of paint. I keep thinking I'm going to buy me some new paint and get rid of the old ones. But I hate to throw it out. 
just because it's in an old bottle. And sometimes when you keep your paint and you mix them with others, they tend to have a smell to them. Can you smell it? It stinks. It has an odor to it, but it dries fine uh, after you use it. It doesn't continue to smell that way. So I am pouncing on my pumpkin until it makes me happy. <laughs> I'm going to continue to paint until it makes, till it looks great. So I'm uh, getting there. I am getting there. Right there. So I want to go out a little bit to give it a a curvy up here. You know, a a, a hump curve around the pumpkin. Like that. I like it. I'm liking it. I'm I'm still got some work to do on it. And you know it always has to go through a little ugly stage before it gets to the pretty stage, right? Mm-hmm. It does. The cold medicine. <laughs> Cheryl's <laughs> Cheryl's uh under the influence tonight, girls and boys. She's under the influence of some cold medicine. Now this is called a marshy green. Well, hang on to it. I haven't used it yet. I might use it on the uh, the little fairy. So, um, I'm going to dry this a little bit and put another layer of something on top of it. And I, I want to do a little bit of red. I got some bright red. And I also have some burgundy, Tuscan red, and that might be good as well. And I am going to use a little bit of yellow. All right, and I've got some milk chocolate. I'm going to goof around a little bit on my burnt umber, although I really probably shouldn't, but I am going to do it. 
got one dot. You really can't tell what I've done, but um, I've just put another layer of a, brand, a chocolate brown on top of this umber brown. And I sort of went around the pumpkin a little bit to make it that curviness that I want. That I want to see. And I don't know if it's, it's, I can still go back over it with the burnt umber, I suppose. I don't even see the burnt umber. I know it was burnt umber. I do know that. There it is. I like this burnt umber. I'm just going over it until I'm happy. That's the main part. You get to go over it till you're happy. I like it. I like it a lot. It's just perfect. <laughs> Um, I'm still going to put some more uh, the my I'm just using this brown to go over some of my ridges here. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but it's my brush is too dry. Too dry. Okay, so I'll clean my brush out and I'm going to go for I'm going to go for the red. There's a little, I've got two shades of red, and I'm going to use them both. What happened to Erin that came into chat? Uh, well, she's not here tonight, Angie. <laughs> Nothing's happened that I know of. Uh, I do know that this is a, a popular time for dinner time for some people. And um, she comes in every now and then. I'm not worried about it. Uh, I haven't talked to her, if that's what you mean. 
Angie's going to get some V8 juice. Woohoo! Go, girl. So I've got some red on here, and I'm going to uh, put my brush in it and share the love. And I'm going to use a little bit of red right here and right here and right here. And the idea is to get the red on, pat it on some of the spots, and then go back over it with your dry brush and blend it in. Blend it in. So I'm going to wipe my brush off. And there's a little bit of too much right here. And I'm just going to wipe it off. But I'm going to take my brush, and it's dry right now, but I think I'm going to just get it wet, a little bit of water, and I'm going to blend uh, this little bit of red that I have on here, and I'm going to blend it out where you can't even see that those red marks. And I might even scrub... scrub it with my paint look what i did there you can see the red tone but you can't see those big fat red dots anymore and it gives it a um a highlight on that side so i'm just going to dampen my brush again and squish this red around and i want to do that on all of them before the red the red dries so I'm just going to get my bread wet again with my with my brush. And then I'm just going to scooch it in, swirl it out, and thin it out. And I might even dab it if you think there's too much red. And I've, I've dabbed up some of the orange paint, but I'm not going to worry about that right this second. It's going to be okay. We will work with that. So let's get the rest of these reds. And I'm making this up as I go. I did not learn this. Nobody taught me how to do this. I just know that I want those values hidden in my pumpkin right through there. And I'm, I'm, I, and if it's too red, I can still put orange back on top of it. So there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm. I'm going down below <laughs> the orange paint and I'm scratching it off, but I'm not worried about it. Uh, that will, we, we, we can correct that. Now, if I was working on a canvas, this would be so much better because I'm working on paper. You know, the paper gets soft underneath and it'll can peel. Now, but if I was working on a canvas and scratching and doing this, uh, I would just put paint on top of paint on top of paint until I got what I liked. But from a distance, I know that I can work with this and I can fix this. And I like this one and this one and this one right in here the best so far. So that's okay. I'm going to... Um, take some more of the orange and I have another orange that I can use and it's called oops sorry um it's a yellow orange it's acrylic paint I have no idea where it come from it's in a tube and it's got a lot of yellow in it it's not yellow it's a yellow orange uh, it looks orangier in person than it does on in here. But I am going to use some of it on top of my pumpkin. Squirt some out here. And I'm going to share it. <laughs> I'm going to share it with all of the whole pumpkins. So that's all I need of this. Uh, for the whole page. That's all I need of it. So uh, that'll work. So I'm just going to go over my pumpkin. And I'm going to continue to put layers. 
I love I'm loving this, guys. I am absolutely loving this. Uh, and I'm just going to put layers and layers and layers until I get exactly what I like. And I will know it. I will know it when I'm done. I'm going to say, oh, step away from the paint. <laughs> and I might be getting close to that, that phrase. I might be getting close to it because when I look in the picture on the TV screen, I see this and it's like, ah, oh, it's eye candy. <laughs> It's eye candy, I'm telling you. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I love this. Uh, it's kind of a messy look. It's kind of a, a messy look to it. I don't know how you would describe this. Uh, it could be could be a fun amateur look to it, maybe. Yeah, yeah, they come around, and I see Judy all the time, too. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, I'm liking this. I like the scenery of the red uh, that's um, poking through. I like that a lot. And I'm going to take a little bit of this... Um, orange here and I'm going to put a little bit on my stem I might want to go to a lime or a limey color let's go to a lime I think I've got a lime color over here if I didn't use it all up I don't see lime but I can use a little bit of white and green to uh, create a little lighter color and I've got my palette right here so I'm just going to squirt a little bit of yellow out and a little bit of this green here And mix that up. To get a, a lime. A lime. And it looks limey to me. It's a dark line. But all I want to do is put some marks on my stalk. Uh, to give it a two-tone and it did it did and on top of that I can still add a little bit more yellow uh, just some highlights and this green, this dark green that I used, it was a, uh, I added another layer to make it thick, remember? Well, when I did that, it bubbled up with the heat gun. And it reminds me of that expanding paste. It bubbled up, the, the, the paint did. So it's kind of rough. It's rough to touch, although it's wet right now. But um, so... Uh, that's what that reminds me of. We could have used the expand paste. I am too. And I want to add some brown. Some brown to that stalk. And I might have to get into it another way. This paint is all dried up. You can see the bottom right here. See the bottom? That's the bottom of the bottle. This stuff is so dried up. There's absolutely no water in it. But it'll be perfect for what I'm about to do. Because I want to add it to the stalk. And I don't mind it being lumpy and bumpy and thick and rich. 
because it'll give it more texture as I go on top of my stalk. Yeah. So I, this is this is the blending part and the mixed media part that I love when you get to do stuff like this and you're creating you're creating a, a new look just by doing it yeah just by doing that I love how bumpy and lumpy it is I love it I'm gonna let that dry and I'm still gonna go back over top of it with some green um, I've kind of lost some of the green and I'm going to hang on to this as a, a medium tool to use. I can mark it and put extra thick on it. <laughs> I can mark it and uh, label it as thick, 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 thick. And that way we know it's going to be a, it's not going to be a true paint. <laughs> it's going to be something different. And I still need a napkin here. Let's see. There. So, uh, uh huh. Okay. So I am going to get some more of this thicket uh, paint. This is called Marsh Green. The other one was Thicket. We'll use, we'll use the green, Marsh Green. Some of you girls are going. I understand. Good night, Vanessa. Have a good night. I will be on for an, about a half hour more. So anyway, I just poured that on here. And I'm just going over top of the brown and the yellow and the greens. And uh, I'm still working on that on that stalk. I'm going to let that dry now for good. Um, and then I might go back over with a uh, an eyelash brush to give it some of the, the grains uh, on the stalk. You know how it has kind of like some striation grains. Like in the pumpkin. I am going to put some more. Uh, that red turned out really great. I, I was going to try some of this Tuscan red, but the red turned out pretty cool. So, but you can see on the original picture, it has some red tones to it, deep red, orangey tones. So I'm going to take a break from the the pumpkin, and I'm going to start. Start working on the uh, the pixies, the little pixies now. I gotta get them started. So they need a little flesh, peachy face. So I'm going to put uh, I'm gonna put one right here and one right here. That's probably too much, but we'll see. And we'll make a make her face. And uh so this is their little face. As they peek up on top of the pumpkin. And they do have little hands. Like that. And then here's the other one.
And here's their little hands. And then I will we'll let this dry. Their face is real thick. <laughs> Yep, they got a lot of paint. I probably got too much paint, but that's all right. And I'm going to go ahead and try to fix some of this pumpkin. It's kind of got a little few blemishes here that I think I can probably fix. Right there. <laughs> Looks good. Right there. That looks all right. I think that looks a little bit better than what it was. For sure. So, let me dry this much. And I have a vision. <laughs> I just thought of something. And I will do it. But on the top of these uh, little pixie fairies here. <clears throat> this one over here has, has a, a band around her hat or their hat. And it's kind of fuzzy and fluffy looking. So I'm going to paint it with the green and I'll paint the red and everything. And then I'm going to add it after it dries. I'll add a little glue to it and I'm actually going to add some wool, some fuzzy little wool pieces to that to make it fuzzy looking and make it 3D. That would be uh, like a one of those things I was talking about. <laughs> Not Pandora. Uh, what was it called? The 3D looking things. So that would be fun to do. And I still want to put some yellow. I've got some yellow out. I'll use it. Uh, I'm going to pounce. And this yellow that I'm using right here, right now, is a tampera. It's a tampera paint. But I'm trying to get a highlight on top of the pumpkin, a lighting that's showing whatever light is shining through the window, and it's shining and hitting the high points or the high humps of the pumpkin.
and I'm just pouncing my brush trying to find those high points And it is so funny how I am, I'm learning all of this with you guys by talking about it and by trying to explain what I see and trying to achieve. And I can't tell you how happy this is making me feel right now because I'm achieving something together with you guys and I've never done it before but I know they they try to explain these techniques in school in art schools and stuff but I'm explaining it to you as I'm learning about it and I'm painting what I see oh my gosh guys Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Can you all see what I'm seeking? <laughs> see? <laughs> Look at that pumpkin. Oh my gosh, it just came to life again. The Dalarama. Thank you, Becky. Yeah, it's like the Dalarama's coming to life. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm so excited. It didn't take much to make me happy. <laughs> So I'm going to go back to my real, uh, real greeny green thicket paint. And I'm going to attempt to, uh, and this, this is thick too. This is just like that other one. It's real thick. Uh, the water has evaporated out of it. But that's all right. We're going to use it. So I'm going to, I don't know if it's ready or not, but I'm going to make a tat over here. And I'm going to make it thick. Oh my gosh, it looks good. So he's got his little hat on. Oh my goodness. I need to put a, this green down. I've got some of this limey green over here that I'm going to put down so that you can see where the hat is going on the dark brown behind it. You see the hat? It, uh, so this, this green hat has turned into a little bit of different shade than the original picture and and i think that's good because uh it doesn't have to be green it could be it could be yellow but i like what i did with the around the hat and i need to put some hair on this guy this guy needs some brown hair uh but while i have the thicket i'm going to make a brim over here and this is the green that I was talking about I'm going to put some glue down here and add some fibers to it and then this hat over here is going to be red Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And we'll get that red back. And it's the same red that I used in the in the pumpkin over here. You can see some little reddish tones. It's called bright red and it's an apple barrel paint. And it's new. It's a new paint. It's not like that. This one is so old, it's thick, and I need to mark thick on it, too, uh, like I did the other one. Hi, 
Hi. Uh, let's see. No, I don't remember your name. Laura. No, Laura. Susan. No. Uh, hi, FF. <laughs> we'll give you a nickname. Um, I started felting. I'd have to tell you since you just come in. I just started felting this little picture here. And uh, we got this picture off the internet, okay? Somebody said, let's do this, let's do this. And I said, okay, we're going to do it. So I started felting. And I got this far. <laughs> I got this far on it. And, um, and I said, okay, we'll felt on this again next time. So I put it away. And then I said, let's paint it. <laughs> So we're painting our felting project. So welcome, welcome. We do all kinds of things in here. <laughs> so I'm going to try to do the red hat. And I'm going to use this red. Hold my mouth right. So, uh, yeah, we're doing, we're having fun in here. So I thought that it would be really, really cute if I were to, we were talking about the, uh, the Dallarama pictures. And those are the 3D pictures that we, we make uh, out of like shoe boxes and picture frames and things. And I'm not sure if if other things qualify for dialorama effect you know like a 3d effect uh i don't know if this would be in the same category as a dialorama if i were to add fibers to my my page to me it would probably be more mixed media than anything else and I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow to this hat, just like I did that hat. And I'm just going to drag my brush through the yellow like that. And I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow highlights to this hat. Like that. And it sort of gives a little bit of a highlight. Like that. And then I'm going to make, I have to have some rosy cheeks. So I'm going to take the red again and roll it off of my brush so my brush is still wet but i rolled off the paint so it doesn't have a lot of paint on it but it does have some color and i'm just going to touch where the rosy little cheeks would be on here and add a few little red dots and then i'm going to take my paper towel and just blot it off a little bit and make some rosy cheeks like that. Can you see them? Just for the hint of the rosy cheeks. And if it's still not enough, you can always go back. Hi, Heather. Thank you, FF. She likes my painting. So I'm just barely, barely touching uh, the cheeks again. And do I have any white out? Hmm, no, but I could put some white out. And they have a, a little bit of a nose. 
Um, so I'm going to go into the white with my dirty red brush. And I'm rolling the paint off. So I have a hint of red in that white right there. And I'm going to make a nose. I'm going to make a little nose. So it's white and pink. And it's a definitely a lighter shade. That's what's down there, which is a probably a if beige I used was probably a cameo. Sun kissed peach was the face color. And I'm using red and white for the nose. It kind of got a big nose. It's a cute little nose. And uh, mixing it in with that white and red to make it pink. So they have a little face. And then there's going to be two eyes. So I'm going to make the eyes. I guess I can make them real dark uh, black. Or I can use the burnt umber because it's real dark. And dry my brush and do the burnt umber. Get the eyes down here. There's going to be two eyes. Can you tell? <laughs> and I'm going to give him a little bit of hair. And I want to use um, another tan color, brown, a lighter brown for the hair. This is lighter than the chocolate brown. And this is, this is real thick. <laughs> this is a thick one, too. And I can use this... Uh, on top of my stem if I want to add some more brown to it, which might be a good idea. It's real, real thick. I wrote thick on it earlier. So I'm going to put this on my stem. We've got a, a variety of layers. And as I'm pouncing, I'm going to pounce in some hair. Uh, just little tiny, tiny pouncing on the page, and I'm making a hair. And I'm blending it into the green cap and the edges. I think he looks cute. And over here, maybe this one's got hair a little longer coming around her face. Okay, I like that. And uh, they don't have a mouth. Hmm. I have some red on my palette over here. It's not real dark, but it's red. I also have really this real dark Tuscan red. And I'm going to put a little bit of out on the red just to, oh, I guess I'll get it out of the bottle. <laughs> Hi, Becky. Hi, 
Hi, everybody. Coming in. Everybody's saying hi. Okay. So, anyway, I'm going to go into this red, and it's a real pretty, pretty Tuscan red, and it's a, almost, I would call it burgundy. And I'm just going to put a hint of a mouth. And you can barely see it, but I can see it, and it looks great. So, I'm going to let that dry. And I've got some of these other colors left on my palette. Some green, and this limey green. We'll put some limey green on here now. I'm just layering and layering until I get something that I like. And I've got some white even. But I'm not sure. I'm just going to, have to let that dry and work on it again later. It's not exactly what I like, but it'll get there. We'll get it back. So I'm just going to take a, a napkin and give it a nice little touch here. And uh, so we will work on that work on that again. Now I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to touch his hat with my glue. And I want to do this one, too. So I've got, you can see the white glue. The white glue will dry clear. So I've got this green here. This is uh, this is my wool, and I'm just going to pull off just that much. There's not enough there to, there is not enough there to really, really see just a little tiny little piece. And I'm going to wad it up. <laughs> I'm going to wad it up and squish it up and roll it up and make it look like that. And I can roll it with my fingers and make it look like some kind of trim. And I'm going to lay it on the hat. And it's glued down on the glue. And I can't tell you. I just can't tell you how cute that is. So this one over here, this one over here, he's going to have a little red. It could be orange, it could be red. So I just pulled off a little tiny piece of red and I'm going to wad it up and roll it. How did I do that? And I'm going to lay it down. And if I have to, I can cut, cut the edge off. Because it's too long. So I'm going to cut it off. <laughs> and put that back down. Put that in the in the bag, and now we have our little hats. Aren't they cute? <laughs> now there is glue. I see the glue. 
and it will dry clear. It will dry clear. Now they have little 3D hats. <laughs> I love it. So. <sighs> so what's it need now? I'm still working on the. The stem. I'm still not happy with the stem. And I'm wondering if I can make some marks. Ooh. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. I'm scraping it off. I think I'd rather use, instead of a paint stick, uh, I'd rather use a, a Sharpie tool. Like a pointy tool like this. Nah, it's messing it up. That's all right. We uh, we can still work on this. It's not over yet. So I was just trying to make some scratching scratches in it. So I'm going to get my paintbrush back. And I'm going to go back into some of the green that I have here. And uh, go over top of the scratchy marks. And we just might have to let it be as is. Let it be. But we tried. <laughs> Just outline it. Okay, I can probably do that. Uh, I'm going to have to wait till it dries. I can outline it with a, a Sharpie pen. It looks all right like that. So I think that's what's all it's going to be. So I have had really, really a lot of fun. I think we should say something up here. Oh, Esther's going to have shoulder surgery next Tuesday, you guys. Head up. Head up. Okay, Shester. Good luck, sweetheart. I hope it turns out really, really good. I'm going to wait and outline it tomorrow or Saturday when I come back. It's, uh, it's so dry, uh, goopy right now. And if I use my felt marker, it'll run it. So I've run too many. So I'm going to let that dry first before I outline it. And uh, Esther, Esther, what would you like for me to say up here, Esther? What should it say up here? This looks like leather or something, doesn't it? That was that, that, uh, Burnt umber. We'll put something on top of what Esther says. Happy fall, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Happy fall, y'all. I have in my possession a couple of markers, like gold and silver. So I'm going to write, write it in silver and then maybe gold on top of it.
I don't know if I did y'all right or not, but it's y'all, y'all. <laughs> don't know if the gold shows up or not, but the silver does. <laughs> so anyway, there's our picture. I'm going to take a picture of it and post it. And that way it'll be online. There we go. And today is November the 4th. Oh, already four days. Four days into the fall. November the 4th. There it is. So. It's alright. Looks good. Looks good. So. That's all I'm going to do tonight. <laughs> What's this? What did Sharon say? Pumpkin wishes and fairy kisses. Aww. <laughs> We might be able to scribble that in the bottom. Pumpkin wishes and fairy kisses. I do have a, a new Sharpie pen mm -hmm. that writes thin. <laughs> so I can write that at the bottom. Shall I try? Here we go. There it goes. We got it on there. We got it on there. Thank you, guys. I turned out really cute. <laughs> Woohoo! We got it on there. <laughs> so, guys. Um, I will go ahead and jump off. We've been on for three hours. So you guys have a great evening. This is Thursday. So I will be back on Saturday. And we're going to play Roll a Turkey Saturday. Roll a Turkey. It seems to me we have a turkey. I, if we don't, I'll have to print it. I can print it off. So uh, we'll do Roll a Turkey Saturday. And what else can we do? Oh, we'll do some fall prompts Thursday. Fall prompts for a, a bingo. We'll do bingo turkey roll. Turkey run. <laughs> uh, turkey bingo. How about how about bingo turkey bingo? I don't know what we'll call it. But we'll do fall uh, Thanksgiving bingo. And we'll do Thanksgiving fall prompts. So you be thinking about those prompts that we could use that's in our room. You know, like fall leaves and... You know, something green, something brown, something orange. <laughs> so you all be thinking about that for Saturday, and we'll do that. Thank you for coming in. I do appreciate you coming in and seeing me, Miss Felter. I love having you here because uh, I love to felt. And 
And if you don't know Sharon Lombard, you should, because she felt a lot uh, fighting. She she's beautiful felting. You should see. You should go to her Facebook page and look at her pictures. Highly recommend it. So, thank you guys. Do, do you feel or do you stream fighting felter? Do you stream? Do you have a channel name? If you do, I would like to give a shout out for it for everybody to go and watch. I'm waiting to see if she answered me. <laughs> Bye, everybody. I don't know how I had that happen. Something is on black on my on my table. You're welcome, Master. You're welcome, honey. Oh, the fighting filter. Okay. So everybody, um, Heather, can you find her channel for me and put it on there? We will go over and, and watch you uh, because I don't think I have. I'm sorry. I haven't. I'll do it. I'll do it right away. So the Fighting Filter has a website or a, or a channel, and she felt, okay. Thank you, Janice did it for me. Thank you so much. I knew I could count on you girls. So we will definitely check you out, and um, I'll try to shout your name out earlier next time and uh, for, for everybody to go and see the Fighting Felter videos. So thank you guys. We'll do that, and we'll, we'll be back on Saturday for some more fun. So good night. I love y'all. I have no idea how I did that. <laughs>